Rachel Ventura, who's a candidate for Congress in Illinois' 11th district. Rachel, are you there? I am here. Hi. Thanks for having me on. Hi. Thank you for being here. Um, so tell us a little bit about why you decided to run. So I um, currently sit on the Will County Board. I ran in 2018 and uh, I was only on there for about a year when I, or a few months when I spoke to our Congressman Bill Foster about signing on to the JPL Medicare for All bill. After several months of run around, he uh, basically said no, he would not be signing on to the bill. And so some local leaders had encouraged me to run for Congress. Um, however, I was not prepared to do so even though I had gone two years without insurance myself and I know the importance of this. But but in June of last year, uh, a group rallied his offices about passing the Green New Deal, and he has reminded us for 10 years that he's a scientist, so I was expecting him to lead the charge in this. Uh, I myself have a background as a mathematician and a naturalist, and I have a strong environmental um, voting record on the Will County Board. And so I was very outraged when I found out that not only is he not supporting the Green New Deal, but he is supporting a fossil fuel bill, to a, which is a $50 million bailout, and he's taking money from the fossil fuel industry. So it was after that I decided to uh, get involved in the race. And recently we had two editorial boards where uh, we really saw just how out of touch um, he was with our district. While I, I have been campaigning on closing the wealth gap in America by providing good paying jobs and healthcare. Uh, he spoke about the biggest issue of the district being AI uh, and artificial intelligence. While some things are concerning about that, that is not the thing that's keeping Americans from access to healthcare or good paying jobs. Wow, yeah. Uh, so you're saying that you went from, you're a board member at Will County and you went from basically lobbying uh, your, your congressman around Medicare for all and Pramila Jayapal's bill. Uh, mm -hmm. to then lobbying him around the Green New Deal and now finding out that he's actually in favor of giving a large handout to the fossil fuel industry. Yes, and I mean, what we found is uh, he's a bought and pay for politician. Like we've seen across this country, many of our congressmen are, and women are supporting their rich donors and not actually being advocates for their constituents. And so I'm not taking any corporate PAC dollars. Uh, we've been endorsed by several national organizations like Our Revolution, Brand New Congress, Matriarch PAC, Blue America PAC. These are all organizations that are out there fighting for the working class uh, and every American. So that's our tagline, is a government and an economy that works for everyone. And in order to do that, they have to raise small dollar donations and not be bought and paid for. Um, and so that's the challenge we have. He is the 34th richest person in Congress and has a small war chest. And we are uh, making excellent uh, waves. Uh, we They recently have uh, increased their staff and have taken two polls now uh, where we're out there knocking doors, talking to constituents, getting a 60% approval rating. And that's what it needs to, that's what we need to do all across this country is to stop allowing money and politics to dictate policy and start being a voice of people. Yeah, I see that you are also in favor of overturning Citizens United and that once again, you are not taking any corporate PAC money um, and that you're endorsed by the Sunrise Movement, which is a climate justice movement and that climate justice is hugely important to you. Just tell me a little bit about your work around that issue. Yeah, we have co-hosted now three climate uh, strikes here in our area, which we have Joliet and Aurora in our district, which are the second, third largest cities in Illinois, just outside of um, Chicago. And uh, so we had very successful climate strikes. We've had speakers come out. And then I personally have been helping an area here. We've got some coal ash um, that is not in line quarries and so it's leaching into our water. So we've been talking with the Illinois EPA about strengthening their uh, their laws here since we've seen continued cuts to the national EPA. So that's one of the things that we've been advocating for people to make sure that they have clean water to drink. Um, I also, when I was on the Will County Board, fought for 800 families in Fairmont to have clean water because the township wanted to privatize their water and Aqua, who was wanting to buy the system, is now being sued by uh, the state of Illinois because they did much what Flint, Michigan did. They changed the way they processed their water and was poisoning people with lead poisoning for about seven months. And so it was really great that we were able to stop that privatization in our district. And we were able to work with levels of government to have an intergovernment agreement to so that they could get public water from the town next to them. Wow, so you successfully maybe prevented another incident like we saw in Flint from happening in your community. 
Yeah, and these are some of the things that we need to start looking at. We've got two refineries in our area. We've got you know chemical plants, we've got coal ash cleanup. So this is really ground zero for the Green New Deal. Um, we have people who really need jobs here. We have undocumented workers. We have a prison town where there are people who have past records. And unfortunately, instead of having good paying jobs for these individuals, plus all of the working men and women in our district already, is we have temp agencies who offer or who exploit wages um, because they know individuals don't have access to other jobs. So mm. they're getting paid less than minimum wage. They have horrible working conditions. We have the largest inland port in our backyard. So Amazon has taken in or has received $29 million in tax abatements over the last 11 years. Meanwhile, we have people who are making less than $15 an hour. About two thirds of our district on average makes less than minimum wage and or the $15 minimum wage, which is what we're advocating for. Whereas a third of our district makes more than double that. So we have a huge wealth gap here. So we need good paying jobs. We need criminal justice reform. We need immigration reform, which includes a pathway to citizenship, education reform, so kids aren't being crippled coming out of college and making sure that the college is paid for, fully funded from pre-K through college. These are all of the things that we um, are running this platform on. And this is what's resonating with voters because they understand these are things that will make their lives so much better, um, give them a quality of life, and it will also help affect the social um, issues that we're seeing in this country. Um, but our current congressman is turning a blind eye to all of these things. Things. And you know he's taken 1.4 million from corporate banks, and he sits on financial services. He's taken 600,000 from the pharmaceutical and insurance companies, mm. uh, you know, and money from fossil fuels. So it's time that we have a new representative representative in the office. Do you think that uh, your opponent, uh, Congressman Bill Foster, do you think he's feeling the heat from your campaign? Absolutely. After the two uh, editorial boards, we had a candidate forum, and he left shortly after um, we got started. Before the interviews were even done, uh, the host did stop him and have him ask. Uh, we got to answer two questions before he tried to slip out the door. I did challenge him to a climate debate since I have a STEM background and he does as well. Uh, we have put some pressure on him, called every day about this debate. The newspapers have printed the requests of the debate, and he has yet to get back to us. But uh, we definitely have been, with the second poll now being launched, we definitely know that they are very nervous about this. Wow, so today is a day where the Supreme Court upheld a Trump administration um, policy that's called the public charge rule, right? Um, which basically discriminates against low income, undocumented immigrants in this country. You have an incredibly strong statement on immigrant rights on your website, um, and it's very thoughtful. I just wanted to read uh, it to you, which it says that if undocumented workers have a reasonable path towards citizenship, that exploitation will stop, and the undercutting of wages should strengthen our economy for all workers. Can you just uh, you know expand on that a little bit for me? Yeah, I mean, people are already here working uh, and living, but they're living in shadows because they feel they can't fully be a part of our society. So the first thing we need to do is make sure they have that pathway so they can be proud to be here and not feel like they have to hide. Um, the other thing, though, is these companies who will hire undocumented, they know that they can pay them less than minimum wage. They know they can pay them less than what uh, is required for that job. And so they, that they exploit those wages. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we protect the people who are here. The second thing is go after these companies, not just through fines, because if they feel it's still profitable to exploit workers, they will. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to have jail time as well for these companies who are, are violating human rights. And so by doing that, you know, we can make sure that the, the individuals who are here are getting paid good jobs and that everyone has an, an act, uh, attainable and accessible way to come to this country and become an American. Uh, I'm very upset about the Supreme Court. You know, it, it's not just the, the tired and the sick, but the poor as well were welcomed in this country once. And now we're saying that it's not. I know America can be better than that. Uh, my opponent, you know, he he supports a, a pathway to citizenship that's not very attainable. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of that, those two aspects of that requirements are paying all the back taxes and paying all of the legal fees. Well, that can run into the thousands. And then without any type of time frame, you could be paying these fees for lawyers for 12, 15 years. So right. we need to make sure that people who want to become Americans and want to live the American dream have an ability to do so and come here re regardless of their financial situation. Right, and holding uh, corporations accountable 
people when they are paying lower wages um, and skirting around the system while protecting immigrants. One last thing is that you you also believe in giving the currently incarcerated the right to vote. Um, that is a really bold progressive stance that a lot of, um, not all progressives are, are unified on, but one person who is, is presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. Why do you believe that um, people who are in prison right now should be able to vote? Yeah, it's a really dangerous thing to put someone in prison and not allow them to vote because you know what happens if we have a shift, a dramatic shift in our politics and we start getting arrested for things that maybe your due process has been taken away from you. And now you don't have a way to change that shift of government. And if we incarcerate people you know, at a high percentage rates, then then you're stuck. You know, you have no choice to undo that. And so the people who are being penalized by this should have a voice. They should have a an ability to be a part of the system too. And one of the things that we're that I'm uh, supporting here is uh, close uh, sealing your records to employers and to uh, mm. landlords, so that when they've served your time and you've come out, you can be a part of society again. Otherwise, you're serving a life sentence, and that's not what the judge has ordered. And so we need to make sure that we can welcome people back into our into the working class into our communities and give them the chance that the second chance that they deserve. We all make mistakes and we need to be able to be a part of the system and voting is definitely a part of that. That, that is incredible. Uh, Rachel Ventura, candidate for Illinois 11th district. Best of luck to you. If you don't know, the primary in Illinois is March 17th. Uh, Rachel's going head to head with uh, Be uh, Democrat Bill Foster, the incumbent. And of course, the general is November 3rd. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com slash join.